Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to use um, the Padstack editor that comes supplied with the Cadence PCB tools. So we can launch this a couple of ways. Um, we can actually launch this from within inside PCB editor. There's a tools Padstack modify design Padstack. You can pick the Padstack that you're interested in and then edit, and that would launch the Padstack. That's actually going to modify something directly from the Padstack editor within within the board. So we're not going to do that in this scenario. Um, the other way to do it is it's actually a standalone installation or part of the tool. So we could just come to the type here to search on Windows 10 and just start typing pad. And we'll then see uh, Padstack editor. And the tools then get launched. Um, you can create shortcut icons for this. I've got one actually down here um, on my taskbar. So once Padstack editor is launched, um, you've got different um, Padstack usage types. So through pin, SMD pin via, BB via, micro via, etc. Um, and you can define a specific type. Um, this information actually gets exported as the as part of the IPC2581 file um, that you may want to use from a manufacturing point of view so you get the, the correct pad stack usage. There's the different pad geometries. So using these different pad geometries, you can pretty much make any shape that you need. Um, there's rounded rectangles, chamfered rectangles, etc., octagons, donuts. So let's go and create um, a couple of pad stacks just to show you some examples. So we'll do a file and new. Um, I'm just going to use a default location. Let's just call this Steve underscore PTH. Um, and we'll make a, a through pin hole. We'll click OK. We're then ready to start moving across. And the idea is literally just to work across the tabs as you go. So I want a circular geometry. So I go to the drill tab and we'll specify our drill. So um, you can have a circular or a square drill hole. Um, what's the finished diameter? So this one's going to be half a millimeter. I'm going to put a, a tolerance for the drill hole. Um, if I know what the drill tool size is, I can actually specify that. And if you can see, I'm actually getting tool tips if I hover over the fields. Um, so you actually enter that information. There's different type of uh, drill, uh, standard drill type. So laser, plasma, punch, etc. So if you know that information, you can specify it here. And that can also come out as part of the fabrication drawing. Um, because it's a PTH hole, I only get the option for plated. It would have to be a mechanical or a tooling hole to get a non-plated hole. Um, and then I can have multiple drills. Um, which allows you to have multiple drills inside one pad shape. Um, I'll show you an example of this when I make a via at the end of this. So go to the secondary drill tab. Um, I've got options to enable a back drill so I can then start to put back drill information on the specific pad stack if I wanted to use that. And then also for counterbore and countersink, I can specify um, the dimensions that I want. Again, that would come out on the fabrication join if I was going to do countersink or counterbore hole. The drill symbol is for the NC drill data. Um, so let's just make a circle, we'll specify A as the text and uh, a value of 0.5. Um, this then comes out on the NC drill legend drawing. You can offset the drill uh, from the center of the pad. So I can actually put an X, Y to offset the drill location. Um, and then the design layers is where we start to define the pad shapes itself. So um, the begin layer, I want a circular pad. I've got a, two millim a, one, a half millimeter hole, so I'm going to put a, a one millimeter diameter. I, don't, I can offset the pad, so I could, if I put a small offset here, you can see the pad could be offset from the drill hole as well if you wanted to do that. Um, there are some scenarios where you need that. That's the basic information I need for that. So I can then use the copy, so I can do a copy, drag select the two cells, right mouse button, paste, and then I've effectively defined the begin layer, the default internal, and the end layer. If you still define things like thermal pad and anti-pad, you can do that. Um, I don't tend to normally do that now with positive dynamic shapes and, and solid copper pores and stuff. Um, I don't tend to worry about these too much. You can also define things like a keep out. So if I wanted to put a specific keep out on every internal inner layer, I could specify the geometry and then specify the diameter of a keep out. Um, if I had a specific RF uh, application or something like that, where I wanted to clear the copper beneath the pad stack. In this scenario, um, not really relevant for a through hole pin, normally for a surface mount pin, you would do this kind of stuff. but. We then go to the mask layers. I need to do the solder mask top and bottom. So I'm literally just going to select those and paste because I've still got the information in the, in, the, in the paste buffer. So that's my solder mask top and bottom. I don't tend to define a paste mask for a through hole pin. So that's kind of it for, for the default setup. Um, there is an option to do things like suppress unconnected pads and I can lock the layer span to stop it adding uh, layers to the actual pad stack definition if I wanted to. Again, normally defined if you're using something like a BB via and you wanted to lock that layer span. There's a summary which gives me kind of a report, a general report for the pad stack itself. If I'm happy with that, I can then go and save that pad stack and it gets written to my location. 
let's do a file new we'll do um, let's do a Steve underscore SMD and we'll change the past that usage to an SMD pin click OK and I'm back to the original screen again so SMD pin this example is going to be a square pin um, and then I'm going to work away along the tabs so I don't need to worry about a drill because it's a surface mount pin so design layers um, for the top layer we want a square pin and we will put in a size of four millimeters and I get the previews here so 2d 3d and 3d pad stack views uh, we'll then copy that we'll go to the mask layers solder mask top we'll paste that so obviously I want the size for size for the solder mask for the paste mask I want to make um, something slightly different here so I could just copy that uh, I can actually make a checkerboard style um, patch which is a lot of paste mask on large pads now a lot of the manufacturing component manufacturers want that information so we can select a paste mask top instead of it being a square I'm actually going to choose a flash uh, and then we can actually go and browse for the flash symbol so if I had one defined here I could pick it if I haven't got one and I don't in this example I'm going to create a new flash symbol and then give it a name click OK and then uh, PCB editor gets launched and I can then start to define my flash symbol so let's just zoom in on the 00, zero location so this is key we define everything around the center point so this would be the center of the pad so um, let's just set up some grids you might want to set up your units as well if, there, if, there isn't, if it isn't already defined so I'm just going to set up a half millimeter grid and we'll turn the grid on click OK so I want to draw my rectangular checkerboard pattern here so I'm just going to use a, a rectangular shape static solid and we will draw um, let's draw a, a square there I'm then going to use the, the copy pick the item that I want to copy um, so let's have a, a 3 by 3 matrix based on 1.5 and we will then click to add the, the matrix option and I get my checkerboard style so let's just bin this one and then we'll just change the origin so set up uh, change drawing origin right mouse button snap pick to shape center that's drawn my checkerboard style which I can then save once it's saved we'll just exit and then look in this list and Steve flash is now available for me to select so I can click OK and that then shows me a preview of the che checkerboard and adds it to the paste mask top layer. If I'm happy with that, obviously I've got the options to look at and the summary if I need to do anything here, I can then go and save the pad stack. <coughs> so let's just go and show you how to make a via um, with the multiple drills option because there might be some thermal drills that you might need to do or power via. So we'll do a file new. We'll call this Steve underscore via. Uh, this is going to be a, a via option. We'll click OK. So that then sets the via circle we'll do the drill so again let's specify this as maybe 0.2 as the drill size uh, not point not one type the values incorrectly and it's a plated hole so in this scenario I want four drill holes sorry I want two by two drill holes with an offset of maybe 0.2 and point two so I get this kind of four drill option if I then look at uh, the design layers maybe let's just make this a circle um, what diameter do I need do I need one probably yeah I probably need a one millimeter drill hole and that, that allows me to effectively have the four drill patterns so I can then copy that paste it to the inner layers paste it to both the mask layers the solder mask top and bottom let's go back and set the drill symbol so circle a 0.5 that would allow me to define this um, everything else is all fine so I can then get this multiple drill option to drill four times inside one pad stack which can uh, can help me saving this from a definition point of view I can then go and save the pad stack uh, we'll also just uh, show you some of the other options so file new let's just do steve underscore smd1 we'll make this an, SM, uh, an smd pin click OK so in some scenarios rounded rectangles um, you might want to kind of get make a bullet shaped type pad for example so let's look at the design layers when we pick um, the type we've got a rounded rectangle if I was to do maybe a 
a two by three pad stack you get the kind of this rounded rectangle option but if I, I can actually remove, choose to remove corners maybe specify the radius as 0.5 um, let's make the width one I get this kind of bullet shape if I was then to choose not to put the lower left and the lower right on I could then shape, shape make a bullet style pad um, so you have adjustments here um, with most of these options you can tend to make the pad stack that you need um, with the default pad stacks that you've got without having to define specific shape symbols anymore so I'll save the pad stack and we're good to go.